for? Anybody? Anybody know what a landscape architect is? Okay, okay, cool. All right, so uh, in this room, we work for the bad guys. <laughs> so we work for the developers. We, we do, a lot of, do a lot of development work. We also do a lot of work for parks and that sort of thing. In the last few years, uh, in the last number of years, I've really tried to focus on trying to use native grasses instead of Bermuda and trying to bring native plants you know, into the mix. Um, so, so we have been really fortunate to work with a number of different developers who are really interested in doing that. Uh, and this is a case study of a project for Springwood. So any of y'all know where the new Exxon campus is? You know, the new Exxon campus on the north side of town? So, um, so this is, uh, you know, when Exxon bought land from CDC Houston, uh, the deal was that they wanted it developed, they wanted the whole development to be very, developed very sustainably. Uh, so our goal, uh, so here, here is the development here, this right at this point is uh, the proposed Grand Parkway, uh, and this is the site right here. Uh, this is the development, and so our project was to do the medians and the rights of way all in native grasses, uh, and our, the first phase of the project, this is Springwoods Drive, went from 45, or it's sort of, I don't know if it's 45 or the tollway, it's kind of strange right there, they come together. So at Springwoods Drive all the way down here through this point, and then Holsworth, which goes up this direction. So the first phase of our project was this right up through there. Uh, so I'm gonna skip, this is an hour long presentation, I'm gonna try to run through this just to give you an idea of the method. Uh, so, so basically when you're working for a developer, you don't get six years to build a prairie. You get 18 months if, they're, if you're lucky. Uh, basically in about 18 months they, were, they said, you know, a year to two years we had to have something to show. So, so what I'm gonna show you today is what we did to sort of jump start the prairie, so to speak. Uh, so what we looked at was, oh, push the wrong one. So what we looked at was all of the medians were sort of a mixture of grasses with heavier plantings of the forbs in some areas. The rights of way, we had a shoulder of mowed turf, which unfortunately was Bermuda. It was planted before we got there. And then we had bioswales. Then we had some areas of grasses on the edges and then reforestation on the sides. So this was at one point would have been, you know, a, a pine and we had some leftover, you know, second generation pine. So our idea was to get sort of a grass wildflower sort of area. And again, here's a cross section. Uh, native grasses, native grasses, bioswale, and in, then into the woods. So the first thing we did is we looked at the, uh, at the soil, uh, soil data and said, what kind of soils are we dealing with? Uh, and then we, and from that, from that overall soils uh, uh, mapping, we looked at different places to take soil tests from. So this is a soil test that we took. We did soil food, how many of y'all know the soil food web? So we did soil food web tests that gave us total bacteria, active bacteria, total fungi, active fungi, uh, nematodes, uh, you know, all of the, um, you know, to the whole soil food web. What we found out is pretty much what we knew because we knew we had fill. Looking at the dirt, we knew we had fill. So this is just, you know, basically no organic matter. The organic matter was about 1.4 to about 1.8. The pH went from about 5.1 to about 5.4. So, um, so again, there's soil food web analysis, if you haven't seen that, total, active, t total inactive bacteria, total inactive fungi, uh, uh, and the complete soil food web report for each of those sites. Uh, so, then we, so then we looked at, okay, this is what we've got, this is what we've got to deal with, so we had to figure out how to deal with the soil. So that was one thing. The next thing we said is, okay, what are we gonna do about plants? Because we couldn't just go out there and seed. You know, we knew that we had to plant some. So we said, okay, let's do this. And we went to Kingsville to one of the uh, prairie things uh, a while back. And, and what we, uh, one of the comments that we got from that seminar at Kingsville was that you get more in two years if you plant and seed than you get in six years if you just seed. So we said, okay, we're gonna plant, we're gonna seed. So what can we plant and what can we seed? And we had a wish list. And we said, okay, yeah, that'd be really nice, but nobody's growing a brown seed pest phalen. And nobody's growing Texas winter grass, although at this point, but, but we've, we figured that out now. Uh, so then we went to all these different growers all over Texas. We went to four or five different places, and we were kind of doing three or four different projects at the time, so we were able to sort of spread this time out onto a couple of different projects. 
So um, we looked at, you know, McNeil Nursery, Josh Growers, Native Plants, Tree Search Farms, Madrone. We went all over and visited all these different nurseries and said, what are you growing? What could you grow? How long would it take you? How long would it take you to grow, you know, little blue stem? Where is your seed source? You know, where are you getting, you know, where are you getting your starts from? So we came up with grasses and ground covers and wildflowers to actually plant. And then we came up with different seed sources. Okay, you're gonna plant seeds. What is your seed source? Where did it come from? Did it come from, you know, some of these seed sources are coming from, you know, they take it overseas and bring it back, that sort of thing. So we were trying to sort of dig as much as we could into where this stuff was coming from. We're working on the north part of town. Uh, you know, a lot of the seed is coming out, of the, the NRCS releases are coming out of the valley. Uh, but, you know, you've gotta get the seed where you can. Um, so we came up with seed sources. We also looked, because it's important to our client, we also looked at the bloom times of the forbs. So when, what's blooming when? Uh, and, and, you know, what, so what do we want to, what do we want to try to plant? Because we did want a flower show. Um, and then we said, okay, what we did, and we've learned, we've done about three or four phases of this now. The first phase was about, uh, I think the very first part was like 18 acres, and now we're into, into you know, we've kind of, I don't know if we've quite doubled that, but we're into 30 something acres that we've, that we've, we've done this way. And we've, we've fin finessed things a little bit. We started out with just plants. Uh, we started out with four inch pots. We found out that some things do great. Little blue stem had no problem. We put it in the ground, it grew. Now, we did have irrigation. So our goal was to have irrigation, was to not like irrigate like a horticultural species, but our goal was to, quote, emulate rainfall in a good year. So we needed to get it started and, and we don't have any control over the developer as to when he says, you know, he may say go, and he did say go in July, and I'm like, really? So, so we, our goal was to put down the seed first and then kind of stomp it as we planted. Sometimes that worked, sometimes it didn't. Sometimes we got the seed down first, sometimes we got the plants down first. Uh, we did have in the contract overseeding. Um, so, but well, the first thing we did is we, we got the contract growth started with Josh Growers out of Georgetown, and we had three different delivery dates. These slipped and they, they did slip and slide, but, but pretty much, uh, you know, the first, the first couple ones went pretty well. So these are the plants under cultivation, uh, side oaks. We did use frog fruit, very interesting. We used frog fruit and uh, horse herb as, you know, we knew we wanted to cover the ground fast. Uh, and and uh, so we used frog fruit and horse herb as kind of a, a nurse grass to help us, uh, or a nurse plant to help us get that ground covered fast. Because we know that if you have bare ground, the, the, the invasives are gonna come. So the goal was, and clients don't like to see bare ground. You know, they don't wanna see dirt, they wanna see green. So that, and that really was effective. It worked really, really well. So we came up with, in our plans, so this had to go out to bid, right? So, you know, you, get, you, do, you do plans and you put them out to the contractor and you get three or four different people bidding. So you've gotta have enough specifications that they can get an apples to apples bid because this guy bids one thing, this guy bids another, that's not fair. So we had to have a really detailed plan. So we came up with, you know, what is our plant list? Uh, this is a reforestation. So in a, in a uh, 50 by 50 area, about how many trees of what sizes are we gonna have? Uh, and then here's the different, here are the different seed mixtures and plant mixes. And here we are under construction. So one of the things that we did, and if y'all heard Betsy's talk yesterday, uh, we knew that we had junk. So we worked with John Ferguson. Do y'all know Nature's Way, John Ferguson? So we worked with John Ferguson and we said, John, this is what we've got. We want, you know, basically a fungal-based compost. We did about an inch and a half to two inches of compost. We added humates. Uh, we added the, we added microlife uh, fertilizer, humates, and we added some green sand. And that all got, and I know people say don't till, but we had such junk and such hard pan, we had to till. And we felt like, and we observed really, we didn't have that much of a seed load anyway because it was, you know, the developer had just dug something and, you know, pulled it on top. So we didn't really, we had not really seen a problem with Bermuda grass, and in the end, we, we only had problem with Bermuda grass in one area. So, so we did till, um, again, all the, it seems like, you know, everybody says, don't till and bring your, bring your, that expose more seeds to the surface, but in this case, we felt like we didn't really have a choice. Uh, so here we are planting, we planted, in some areas, three foot on center, in some areas, two foot on center. When we had a slope, we planted two feet on center. Uh, when we, we also had a slope, we introduced like eastern gama grass, we used some different materials. Um, so here we are germinating. Again, we had, we had two different mixes. We had, uh-oh, lost off the pointer. In, in the bioswales on the sides, we had, a, we had more of a wetland mix. We, we added some, added some uh, physostegia and uh, uh, different, some lyra leaf sage and things. But here you see the Rebecca coming, Coreopsis. Uh, here you see early growth. So one of the things that we did was side oats, uh, side oats uh, grama, uh, it came up 
really quickly, really nicely. Uh, and, and we still, two years later, uh, we still have a pretty good mix. We're dominant, little blue stem, and side oats. Uh, even now, even two years later. So there you can see it coming in. This is at a month. This is at eight months. Uh, in eight months, 12 months. We didn't get those lights off, did we? Uh, sorry. These are, okay, again, 12 months. And again, you can see the slope here. Uh, and this is 18 months here. So we really started getting really good cover. At about seven months, I called Jaime and I was like, oh, Jaime, I think I have a problem because there were lots of bare spots. Uh, and we did go back and reseed. Our first seed mix was some various Forbes and we used the Native American Seed Coastal Prairie Mix, which is great for diversity of species, but there's no guaranteed live seed count and there's no, there's no tested germination rate, right? Because they're mowing the prairie. So we love that we have a mix of species there. We came back over this and we seeded with some NRCS releases uh, because again, we're looking for that good impact and we're looking to cover that bare dirt. So they came back and, and did that. And we also had in our specification, we had coming back a couple of times with, with the wildflowers because we knew that even though they got the plants in and the grass seeds in, they may not hit that wildflower window. So, um, so that's, you know, we, it, there was a little bit of, there's a little bit of, uh, you know, punting in that first phase and we sort of have worked it out. Another thing that we did use uh, in this is we did use uh, the cereal rye as a, help, as a nurse grass, but you know, we were planting, our seed mix was like this, our plant mix. We weren't using Indian grass and big blue stem, although we're seeing it now, uh, but that really wasn't, we weren't looking for a tall grass prairie because we're talking about medians. You've got to see over that. You've got to have visibility for your cars. So we used, we used some of the shorter grasses and that cereal rye just stood right up there. So we went, uh, okay, we pulled that out. They physically pulled that out. Uh, and we didn't use that in the next mix, even though I know that uh, Native American seed really likes that uh, in, their, in their general peri establishment. So again, we had, a, we had a maintenance contract for two years for the establishment. And we also had in that maintenance contract, we had uh, the overseeding in there. Uh, we had both mechanical removal, removal and chemical removal. Again, we had problems with Bermuda grass in one area, but we do have a, we do have an edging of Bermuda grass because there's no shoulder and they required a stabilized shoulder uh, for the roadway. So uh, we did a cut edge at the edge of that Bermuda grass and we've had a pretty good, you know, it's been pretty, uh, pretty, pretty effective to sort of keep that Bermuda grass from spreading. Uh, we haven't had too much trouble with that. Again, we've adjusted the water mowing schedule. The first couple years, the contractor was afraid to mow, he just weed eated. Uh, another thing that we did have in the development, we had them, um, we had a, a one truck that was spraying like the, a cover crop, millet and, 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 and oats and wheat for the cover crops in the summer and winter. Uh, and we had one truck dedicated to that that was not spraying any Bermuda grass anywhere. Uh, and we you know, talked to them quite a bit about that because what we don't want is a hydromulch truck that you're gonna throw seed into and then all of a sudden it sprayed Bermuda grass last week and all of a sudden you've covered your site with Bermuda grass. So when you start into this commercial world, you have to be really careful that these guys aren't mowing with a tractor that just came off a of Bermuda grass lawn. And you, know, you just gotta be really, really careful. So again, the first year, the couple years, they just, they just weed eat it. I'm like, really, you could mow if your mower's clean, but they were sort of afraid to run over the plants. Now, now I think that we're supposed to mow or they mowed this, this last month. I'm not sure if they did it yet. So again, on the, on the irrigation, we did have irrigation, which most prairie restoration people don't have. Um, but again, this is for the developer. So you know, a dry year isn't, isn't gonna be a good thing for him. But again, we're trying to emulate, once we get it established, we wanna emulate rainfall in a good year. Uh, because if we overwater, you know, we're going to get things we don't want. Uh, resources, you know, Heine has been really, really helpful. Katy Prairie, all the different, all the diff these different seminars that I've been to have been really helpful to me. Listen to what other people have done. Been down to Kiki Lagarsa a couple times. We've been out, we've been up to Fort Worth uh, to, uh, what's it, Gene? Where's Gene? We just talked about this. Uh, to the, uh, what's, the Botanical Garden at Fort Worth, the, the, uh, the, uh, Seed place. Uh, anyway, uh, so been down to Kingsville and looked at restoration projects, Bamberger Ranch. How many of y'all been to Bamberger Ranch? If you haven't been, it's, it's awesome. It's an incredible restoration story. Um, the library, the George Bush Library is fabulous if you haven't seen that prairie. So we did, you know, we did a lot of research because we, again, you know, developers aren't very patient with, with failure. So uh, we felt like we needed to be sure we'd done our homework. So, so, you know, we, so we kind of came up with sort of steps to success. You know, what are the, what are the goals and what are the appropriate of, of meadows? Uh, one of the things that we, I was in a, a, an ASLA convention in Chicago last week, 
and one of the architects was talking about a project that she'd done, and she said, you know, at some point you have to know when to let go. You have to know when it's not going to work. So I think that's the thing with planting native plants for developers. You have to know what their tolerance is, and you can suggest it and suggest it, and at some point you have to say, okay, I understand this is not something that, that your clients are going to accept, and we can't do that. But we found people really receptive. Um, but you do have to educate the client. We had a couple times when the you know, client called and said, uh, is this going to look good in, is this gonna look good in, you know, in six months? Uh, and so we had to say, you know, you got to be patient. You got to give us a chance, you know. And you tell them that story. The first year they weep, the second year they leave, <laughs> you know, or creep. Uh, so we did the soil test. You've got to look at your soil. You've got to think about the soil because, again, we don't want, we, you know, we have really such a, a bad soil that we knew we had to sort of get the soil. We had to jumpstart the soil in order to plant the blue stem and sort of plant some of these other things we wanted to plant. Um, You've got to have, you know, sufficient nurse grasses. You've got to figure out what your seed sources are. You've got to, you've got to figure out what your, your irrigation is going to be. If you've got irrigation, you have to control your natives. And we walked it a couple times, or more than a couple times, with the contractor going, take this out and take this out and take that out. And they were hand pulling. You know, the sedge, even though it's native, that, that juncus is just, it starts, it's so big that if you don't actually physically pull it out, even if you kill it, Chemically, it, nothing can grow there. So you have to sort of physically remove that. Um, we didn't have much trouble, again, with Bermuda. We didn't have much trouble with Johnson grass. Had some windmill, you know, some, um, you, again, identify the seed window and include maintenance as part of the contract. So this is just, you know, some of the stuff, the, some of the ones were out a, a, about a month or so ago. And we're starting to get, I think they counted five different species of little blue stems. So what I'm thinking is, Either we're getting some things blown in, or now we're starting to see some of that coastal prairie diversity of species coming in. So uh, we had, uh, uh, you know, quite a, quite a, we're getting, getting some Indian grass, getting some wood oats in some areas. Uh, and so here is, you can't see this, but you can see there's a mowed edge right here, and then this is the bioswale right here, and then this is the trail, and the grass is, you know, coming through the woods there. Uh, so again, you know, it's, it's a, uh, it's, it's, it's worked, it's worked. And the client, has, we just had, had a grand, like a big, a big opening about a month or two ago and they were really, really pleased with it. So uh, that's what you want. And so this is, this is about the future. This is one of our first year graduates. And uh, so we did a field trip out there and they were all excited about this. And uh, so, so, uh, so just in you know, summation, you, know, you can do this with developers. You know, they're gonna develop this land. Our goal is to help them develop it more environmentally and try to get them to use, you know, more of the native grasses and less of the Bermuda. Um, try to get them to appreciate this sort of wildscape. Um, and uh, on this particular project, I think it worked. Can I answer any questions for you? We've got plenty of time for questions. Okay, well, I, yeah, I did, I kind of, well, I got about five, eight minutes. Yeah. How often when you're doing your soil testing, do you find a soil that has more fungus in it than bacteria? Well, we usually do the soil food web tests on almost every project we do. We look up the soils and we do that soil food web test, no matter what we're doing. You know, if it's a, you know, if it's a small project and we know we're bringing in a lot of soil, then we don't worry about it so much. But if we're doing anything sort of major, we do that soil food web test. Uh, on this particular project, we didn't find a lot of diversity, uh, you know. Uh, we, we had one project we did in the woodlands and we had, had a real high salt level. And what we figured they had dredged the lake and brought up somehow there were lots of salts on the site and so we remediated the salt. Uh, we did some, put something on there, I can't remember what it was because it was come years ago, to something to bind up the salt. But it's really, if y'all haven't, if y'all aren't familiar with that, you know, take, take a look at, take a look at that. Okay, so the, so the initial uh, installation was done by Shooter and Lindsay. So do you know them? No. So there, you know, there's four or five really big landscape contractors in town that do all the work for the landscape architects. And some of them are a little more, some of them have, a lot of them have degreed horticulturists on staff. That's part of their, they're, they're not just, they didn't just buy a pickup truck. I mean, these guys are educated horticulturists, you know, agronomists, you know, that sort of thing. So Shooter and Lindsay has a couple of really strong horticulturists. Uh, they, and the, these companies do all the, the big commercial work in town. Um, the people that did Dallas is uh, called Southern Botanicals, and they have been in Dallas. They've moved a maintenance division into Houston now. 
uh, and we've been talking with them some. Uh, we have another site that we weren't so lucky. We, it all went in beautifully. It looked really great for about 18 months, and then the Bermuda grass came in. The contractor was not looking. We've got Bermuda grass in all the prairie areas. We've got Bermuda grass in the St. August, in the, in the Asian jasmine heads. I mean, we just got Bermuda grass everywhere. So, uh, uh, but anyway, Southern Botanicals is really good, uh, I think, because they've done, I think, a really good job on, on Dallas. Uh, and they're very, they're very technically aware. Um, so you just have to find somebody who, and the other thing you have to, you know, when you're, when you're asking somebody maintenance, you can't just say, oh, I'm gonna pay you to mow. It's not, it's not that kind of contractor. It's not mow an edge and go away. These people have to know, and sometimes we have to help them or have somebody come help them. And what do they pull and what do they not pull? What are they looking for? So it's real important to stay on top of that. You had a question? I think you answered it. I answered it? Go ahead. The trees in the median. Uh, I think I think this has to be for the this is for the uh, video. Yeah, we we didn't put trees in the median because we didn't there it, further down in part of the area there are some trees, but we really wanted the prairie grasses, uh, and we didn't want to shade it. So we have trees on the edges, but we have the prairie grasses in the middle. On there. Yeah. What's the difference in cost between the conventional and the mixed For maintenance? For, for maintenance or for starting it up and designing it, is it much more expensive? Oh, you know, um, let me think about cost. The, the four inch pots were about $1.75 to two bucks or something, you know, not, not, not huge amounts more than any other two inch, you know, four inch pot would be. Um, I can't remember the numbers we used. Uh, I would say the installation wasn't that much more, but do, we, you cannot sell this that it's going to, quote, save you, you know, it's going gonna, it's gonna to be less maintenance. That is not the sales ticket. That, that is not what we're going to tell our client. Oh, it'll be less maintenance than a regular landscaping, because it's not. Because remember, we can't burn. We can never burn this prairie, because right, right here and right over there, eventually there's going to be buildings. There's going to be there's going to be a whole you know sort of woodlands type you know down you know town center and that sort of thing. So burning is never going to be an option. So it's always going to be a mechanical mechanical removal. So um, so yeah, one thing we don't want to say is oh it'll be less maintenance because you're you know that doesn't work. It's not less maintenance. I don't you know it's not. You sell more of the pitch of the I can't hear. What's your pitch to the plant? Well, because they get this instead of Bermuda grass and Indian hawthorn and, you know, so. And, and, and they're buying into that. I mean, they, they want, they, the clients that we're talking about want that look. So. Wouldn't your maintenance be less because they're mowing less frequently? Yeah, but they're, but they're out there pulling. They're out there, in, they're, you know, and think about 30 acres, and we're out there going, oh, there's a cereal rye. Oh, there's a cereal rye. You know, and they're individually pulling things out. So. You know, we hope, it, it, we hope it'll stabilize, but you know, you'll never, and they're gonna mow like twice a year, the plan is to mow twice a year. Uh, but I mean, even it's, even the first year I'm going through, and I'm, oh, look, a little cottonwood, and like, oh gosh, we have to pull it out. You know, because we had one year, there were little cottonwoods all through it. So do you let the cottonwoods grow up? Or do you say, no, no, we're gonna have a prairie, and then you have to decide what you're gonna do. Because if you let the cottonwoods grow, you're not gonna have, you know, the, the prairie grasses underneath it the same way. Oh, yeah, it'll be less water. Yeah, I mean, you, you'd eventually have, you know, starting out, we're going to put the water on it to get it to germinate, you know, depending upon, you know, when it goes in, whether it's July. I kid you not, they said go in July on one of the, on one of the parts of it. <laughs> it was, but, um, yeah, eventually it would save water. Absolutely. Absolutely. And you can calculate those numbers. You can calculate how many gallons a regular landscape takes, and we do this kind of calculus. How many gallons does it take? What is the cost per gallon? How much water is it going to take? And, and that's, you know, that, sometimes that's something that really surprises the client is how much their water costs when they're doing a traditional landscape. Well, 
Well, on medians for visibility, you're 30 or 36 inches from the roadway. So if you're looking at your car window, you know, you have to keep things below a certain point. So even in traditional landscaping any, in anywhere, you ha you're, there, there's city requires you to keep, you know, the, the landscaping to a certain height. So that's why we didn't, we knew we would get some things because of coastal prairie mix. We knew we would get some Indian grass and some taller species, but at some point, if there's too much of that, they'll have to, they'll just have to, you know, they can weed it at a high level or whatever, but uh, you have to, you have to keep visibility open. Um, hmm, I'm not sure how to answer that. Uh, you know, we're seeing a lot of uh, a good reception from a lot of the corporate campuses. Uh, when we're out, when we're out at the fringes of the city, you know, I think there's more um, accept acceptance for that. To do this inside the loop would be a little difficult. Some of our clients that are a little, they want a little less nature like this. We've gone in, we have one, another site up in this area where we just picked like three grasses and we just planted three grasses start and we seeded some some forbs and things you know in through it and planted some wildflower pockets but our goal was that the first blush would be a much more uh, a much more uh, even sort of landscape so it just it just it depends upon the developer i do think there's a whole lot more interest in this a whole lot more reception but again it's depends upon where the developer is and what he's trying to get across but you know the more the more you know prairies are written about the more prairies are are you know in the paper and in the magazines uh, and the more every day that people accept it uh, then the more the developers are going to be willing to oh well if I have that like you have been to Cross Creek Ranch and, and out, have been out that way um, you know if if, if if homeowners drive through and they say, oh, it's messy, I'm not gonna buy there, you know, versus, oh, native plants, I, I wanna buy there. You know, so if, if, if they reinforce the concept, if the common person reinforces the concept, then the developers are gonna, you know, I mean, they wanna sell land. So they, you know, you just have to, you have to get more, the more public acceptance you get and the more education you give, the, the better off, you know, I think the development community is gonna accept. Stop it there, I think that's a great way okay. to end it. If anybody has any questions for Beth, you can find them. Let's give her a round of applause. Who's next? Now